Firefighters. What's the dumbest person you had to save in a stupid situation? Two I can recall, one specific. The specific one was a young girl around teenage years who decided those toddler swings with a seat you stick their legs through like a little basket so they can't fall out was made for a teenage girl. She got stuck and lost blood flow to her legs. We had to cut her down and get her to a hospital to have it safely removed due to basically becoming a tourniquet in both her legs. The other is general, but it's people who didn't wear a seat belt and the people they ended as a result. You have less control of a vehicle when you're not being held in place, so those wrecks are more common as the first sign of trouble your bums move in the seat and reduces your ability to control the vehicle. You also become a projectile. If you're lucky, you only end yourself. If you're not, you wind up bouncing around and ending a passenger. Also the leading cause of partial ejections and re-entry at a vehicle since nothing was holding them to the seats. So many times it could have just been there cutting someone out of their seat and them being barely roughed up, but instead, they had expired or hit their kid or spouse or other family member or friend and ended them. One in particular I remember was a large man not wearing a seatbelt in an overturned truck. He woke up while we were working on him, cutting the passenger side up to get down to him as the vehicle was on its driver's side down. He kept asking how his son was. At first we didn't get it. Then we realized he was laying in his 15 to 16 year old son and due to the man's size we didn't see him. The son was wearing a seatbelt, but he passed away because his father smashed into him and smothered him while we worked rather than just wearing a seatbelt extender so his seatbelt fit. Also don't lie to us about if you wore it. Your seatbelt won't fire the pretensioners if they are not engaged in the slot. They are designed that way. There is a circuit that is completed by the best being clicked in place, which also how your car knows your passengers are wearing a seatbelt or not and sets off that obnoxious alarm. There is also a sensor in the passenger front seat of most modern vehicles to detect the weight of a small person, which is why your sodas or pizzas or whatever set off the alarm. Just wear the damn seatbelt and don't lie. If you were wearing it, it won't be able to pull tons of slack on it when I arrive. Guess what goes in the report as the determining factor your insurance sees as to if you should have your medical covered as a result of an accident? Yep, I don't know what they do with their information, but I have to write it in the report. I don't know, man. All I know is I feel weird getting into my car and not putting my seatbelt on. Story 2. This is my dad's story, not mine, but I've heard it so many times. My dad was in the Boston Fire Department for a little over 35 years. For 13 of those years, he worked at a fire station in Dorchester. In Dorchester, there's a zoo, the Franklin Park Zoo. One morning in late September, they get a call to the Franklin Park Zoo for a young girl and a gorilla. This is sort of a call they'd get all the time. Gorillas jump at the glass, kids get scared, parents panic and call 911. So they hop in the truck and ride on over. It's one of those kind of foggy early fall mornings as they walk into the zoo. A couple of the other firefighters start walking into the zoo as my dad notices a man sitting on a bench holding a little girl in his arms. Assuming this is what the call is for, he walks over to the man. The little girl has a scrape on her forehead and she's crying but is otherwise fine. The man looks like he just saw a ghost. So my dad asks the guy what's going on. The man just says, Little Joe's out. My dad says, What does that mean? The man just repeats, Little Joe's out. So my dad says, Who the hell's Little Joe? Little Joe is a 500 pound adolescent male silverback gorilla, loose in the streets of Boston. It's right about now that my dad realizes that he's not exactly qualified to handle a gorilla, but he doesn't know who to call, so he calls everyone. Two minutes later, the fire chief shows up, not knowing what the call was about yet, and jumps out of his car saying, Mark, Mark, is this about a freaking gorilla? My dad says, yeah, but how'd you hear that? The chief says, he's standing at the bus stop on Seaver Street. Now the SWAT team shows up. Hats on backwards, M16s in hand, and my dad, being the smart guy he is, looks at the sergeant and says, Hey, I don't think this thing is armed. He caught a bit of flack for that later on. Animal Control and the SWAT team worked together to take down Little Joe. It took 14 tranquilizer darts before he finally went unconscious. Little Joe is still alive and well at the Franklin Park Zoo. Story 3 Obligatory, not a firefighter, but I was working with him that day. So back in my Harbor Master days, the town would have a 4th of July fireworks display every year. They would bring in a barge with something like 2,000 big old mortars on it. We, along with the Coast Guard, State Environmental Police, and a few local cops with the boats would set up a stayback area around the barge for the show. Nothing serious ever happened, so we generally sat around with the best seats in the house. So we're all sitting there celebrating our independence by annihilating as much of the sky as the town budget would allow. But two-thirds of the way, I noticed a small fire in the front of the barge, so I give everyone a heads up on the radio. From a distance, we see one of the crew run across the barge launching projectiles into the sky with a fire extinguisher in hand. About the same time as he arrives, the fire flares up big time. The guy just throws the fire extinguisher into said fire and starts running back to where apparently they had a protected area. Before he makes it back, there's a massive flare-up or explosion. Everybody hits the lights and starts hauling to get to the crew. That's when the remaining fireworks started going off. We were the second ones to arrive and one of the assistant HMs is yelling at the crew to get off the barge. There are dozens of fireworks going off. You can feel an intense heat every single time. 
balls of fire just flying every which way. The crew is refusing to leave. One guy is yelling at my coworker that they can't because all their belongings were on the front of the barge, where the fireworks were exploding in their tubes. The look on my guy's face was priceless. He just reached up and started pulling people down into his boat. I think by the time he grabbed the second guy, they all got the message and started jumping in. We all haul out of there ASAP. Somehow the only injuries were minor from them jumping into the boat. Though I did hear that one of the Coast Guard boats won itself a nice hole in the roof. I never actually saw it. We then made a call to the tugboat that brought the barge to turn its water cannon on the thing. We got a big negatory from them on that one, as they weren't going anywhere near the thing. The next option was the volunteer fire department. The problem was that they didn't have a fireboat, just trucks. So the possibly inebriated firemen need to commandeer the local three-car ferry and use that to get their truck to the barge. It took them about 30 minutes to get there and foam the thing down. It was a pretty funny sight watching them trundle on by having a laugh about being on a ferry. We actually had to bring in the freaking bomb squad from the local large city, but they couldn't make it till the next day. When we finally got the report the fire was caused by, you guessed it. All of the crew's belongings, which were apparently sitting next to the mortars and not with them behind the barrier. The kicker was, all of the company's insurance and licenses, etc. were with their stuff, so they were all gone too. Just all-around fun in small-town America. Story 4. That was the dumb call. My cat got her paw stuck under the dishwasher and kept screaming. I couldn't move her paw and I couldn't lift the machine, so I sat with her while my husband called the fire department. She chewed right through one of my favorite blankets in her stress. Firefighters arrived, not in full suits, but heavy boots and pants. As soon as they came around the corner to the kitchen, our cat miraculously was able to free her paw and take off to hide in the bathroom. The guy seemed confused, but at least it was easy. We thanked them profusely for being scary enough to free our cat. Who had zero physical damage, not even a broken claw. I guess she'd hooked her claws on something and didn't want to let it go for love or money. I never understood how cats can be great predators, but they don't understand they can retract the claws when they're stuck. I guess they just magically forget to do it. But I know what you won't forget. Hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel for more awesome stories. Story 5. I was a volunteer with a rural department in the foothills of Appalachia, in a very small college town, like roughly 1,500 students and about 500 locals. Every year, we had drunk students fall off the side of the relatively gentle sloping mountains around campus. These falls were rarely fatal or even likely to cause serious injury. One of the frats had a big formal and we got the call that someone had wandered off from the party and couldn't be found. This is just before cell phones started to be everywhere, and cell phones didn't work very well around campus anyway. Turns out, it is a guy in my class who I know pretty well. We got out in the woods looking for him and he was groaning down the side of one of the drop-offs. Not a far drop, about 15 feet, but sheer sides and no way to walk out. I personally have climbed down this little gully before and climbed back out. It is not difficult. But this guy can't get it together and has no idea where he is. So we have to get the high angle rescue truck to drive us out there with all ropes and the backboard and other crap. Then we have to get all rigged up using the appropriate anchors and systems that we were required to use in any high angle rescue situation. Then we have to drop down there and try to backboard this hammered a-hole. The whole freaking time he fought us on it. I'm sitting there trying to explain, Hey man, it's me. Your buddy. You know me. Let me help you. Freaking guy kept lurching away from us, taking swings and rolling off the board whenever we finally got him on it. It took half of the small undermanned fire department all goddamn night to get him out, like he literally had time to sober up enough to become cooperative. I suppose that's not much of a story, but it's funny because I still give him crap about it to this day whenever I see him. Just an incredibly frustrating, needlessly difficult situation. Story 6 Obligatory not a firefighter, but recently in San Diego, a couple of suburban moms decided to take their infants up to the local hiking spot called Cal's Mountain. It's not a particularly grueling hike, as many children and elderly people can do it. However, there is a heat stroke warning posted at the trailhead. Not to mention, it can get pretty hot here, and this last week was no exception, with temperatures exceeding 90 degrees. Well, these idiots took their infants up in this heat. The trail is pretty exposed, and due to its easy accessibility and Instagram worthiness, lots of inexperienced hikers flock to it. Many times with little to no water because they underestimated how hot and difficult it could be. Needless to say, the fire department, or EMS, and chopper were all called as these moms had taken their babies up and were too tired and exhausted to come down. They had to go up and give water, check their conditions, and some even carried the babies down. I know fires are a lot hotter, but I bet they were cursing out these moms in their heads as they had to hike up the mounds in pretty much full gear. The moms came strolling down laughing and flipping off the cameras as they were angry people who were going to see their stupidity. This happened all because they wanted to take a group photo with our infants on a mountain on a hot day. Story 7 I was a volunteer firefighter many years back. One summer after a long period of no rain, two good old boys decided to have a few, dozen, beers and take their jeep into a nearby field to go off-roading. 
Well, two feet tall corn stalks that are bone dry wind up getting jammed up into the undercarriage, which on a 90 plus degree day, turns out to be hot enough to ignite a fire. The owner of the field sees the situation unfolding from their house and calls for fire and police. Given the proximity to my location, I go directly to the scene after hearing the page go out and see these two a-holes trying to drive the jeep faster and faster to put the fire out. Eventually, the engine gives out, but they won't leave the car. I physically had to reach in, burning my arms in the process, since I didn't respond to the station first to get my turnout gear, and pull them out. Somehow, they decided that remaining in the car would slow down the flames. And because they thought it was a good idea to continue driving a burning vehicle around a dry field, we now have a significant brush fire and have to call mutual aid from another county to help douse the fire. State police get involved, I have a nice trip to the hospital, and a-holes lose their jeep and the remainder of their booze. Losing their jeep and the remainder of their booze? And go to jail for trespassing and starting a bush fire, right? Story 8. I'm not a firefighter, but my brother's wife at the time was. There was this massive stretcher fire at a barn in town that drew out nearly every truck in the general area, like three towns worth of firefighters trying to get this thing under control. During all of this, there was some lady who continuously called 911, asking over and over again, what's going on at the farm up in the road? According to her, this woman would have to be a complete moron to not realize what was going on as the fire could be seen for miles. Fast forward later into the night and one of the ambulances on scene suddenly leaves. Obviously not normal for this sort of situation, but there isn't much time to question it. Fast forward still and as things are finally starting to calm down and are under control, one of the volunteers in the original ambulance comes over in his own car and shuffles sheepily over to her and the chief of their department. He tells them that there is a woman a little ways down to the road who called the ambulance, hence why they left, and requires a lift assist, but absolutely refuses to let the EMTs do it. No, no, it has to be a firefighter. The brother's wife, seeing that the other departments have things under control, goes with the man to see what's up. Apparently, it was the same woman who had called 911 over and over again, and when they arrived, she was lying on the floor absolutely wailing. The EMTs say they can't find anything wrong from what they've been able to do, but with a requested firefighter, they're finally able to get this woman up. They started asking her what happened, hoping she might be more willing to share with my brother's wife there, and she says, I was just feeling a little ignored. I figured this would get your attention. Grown woman just laid herself on the floor, called for help, insisted in a firefighter when there was no need, all because the barn fire was getting way more attention than she was, and the 911 operators wouldn't give her the gossip about what was going on. I know she got a major trouble for misusing 911, but from what I hear from the people on both fire and ambulance, she's made a habit of calling for help whenever she feels she's not getting enough attention. Story 9. Years ago, we had this call straight out of Caddyshack. Some guy had gotten tired of this gopher ruining his yard. Little did he know, though, who was facing the Sun Tzu of gophers. The homeowner, dwelling upon his experience from Vietnam, decided that the best way to deal with a gopher was to treat the situation like a VC tunnel. In lieu of a frag grenade, he poured a five-gallon can of gasoline down the gopher hole, waited with a varmint gun, and lit it off. The ensuing explosion caused a small crater to form in his yard. I'm still thoroughly impressed that there was a proper fuel-to-air ratio in the network of tunnels that allowed for such an explosion to happen. However, the gopher refused to surrender without a fight. The gopher ran out of the hole, engulfed in flames, causing the guy's yard to catch on fire. The gopher sprinted into the guy's shed, still on fire, and burrowed into a void space in the wall where he passed away. Like the martyr perk from Modern Warfare, his still flaming remains set the inside of the wall on fire, as well as several flammables. In the end, the guy's backyard was ruined, and about a quarter of his shed burned down, taking out a bunch of power tools and a zero-turn mower. He definitely would have saved a few thousand dollars if he had hired an exterminator. Story 10. Former firefighter or EMT... Easily the dumbest person I encountered was a mother of four who decided it would be an awesome idea to get a Facebook or Instagram worthy picture of her kids, all under age 10, sitting in a rowboat. Mother untied it from the dock and thought she'd just pull them back with a rope. That she forgot to hold onto. It floated a half mile down the river before the two oldest boys managed to grab a branch hanging over the bank. It was really surreal to see four young kids, all in matching clothing, sitting in a boat waiting to be rescued. I have no clue what happened after, but they were physically fine, just scared. A little tired, but the mom was in full-blown panic mode and kept getting in her way. I hope she's making better choices now. I guess she thought making her kids wear life jackets would ruin the photo. Story 11 We needed to close the main connection through a forest over the winter because the trees were falling faster on the road than we could remove them due to way too much snow falling. Also, the redirection was more than an hour longer due to the snow. Some cars thought that they would come through but turned around as soon as they saw the trees in the road. One semi also thought he'd get through. He drove up to the trees and called the fire brigade and complained why we didn't remove the trees. As he was calling, a bunch of trees behind him also fell, locking him in. It stood there one month before the trees and the snow could get removed by us so that at least the semi can get back out. We needed another month until the road was free again. Where do you live? Because I'm pretty sure nature is telling you guys to leave. Story 12 
I once had a firefighter tell me he almost passed away in a house fire while going back into the house to look for the owner. A neighbor was concerned about whether the firefighter was still in the residence, so he asked another firefighter. This is about how the exchange went. Neighbor. Why is that fireman still in the house? Firefighter. He's looking for the owner of the home. Neighbor. He is right over there with the video camera. Turns out the owner did not think it was important to alert the fire department he was out of the house. Instead, he was just taking video of the whole event. The fire started because the owner had tried to smother his barbecue cooker flame with leftover wood from the siding that had been installed in his home. The owner did not realize it would burn. Burned his whole house down. Story 13. I was called to a home to get a pie out of the oven before it caught fire. The lady went to the store and was delayed for some reason. She called in one to have the fire department take the pie out of the oven and place it on the stove. The call came in as something stuck in the oven and unable to turn off the stove. Still number one call in 32 years. I'm so curious to know what kind of pie it was for her to call 911. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you made it this far, I'm sure you'll also enjoy. Emergency personnel. What is the dumbest dispatch call you received? Story 6 is outrageous. See you in that video.